Thank Good morning, you. sir. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. I appreciate that. Good morning. Good Thank morning. You. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for that warm welcome. It is a pleasure to be here in the first in the nation primary, and congratulations on taking steps to keeping it that way. I know you guys have done great work in this room. It's good to find some bipartisanship around tradition. Right? Traditions were not just created for arbitrary reasons, they were created for a reason. We have a responsibility to preserve them. And I'm honored to be in a state that still cares about the substance of the electoral process, not just going through the partisan motions, but getting to the essence of what it actually means to be American. That's what I'm gonna to talk to you about this morning. We have lived in the last 10 years through a national identity crisis. Faith, patriotism, hard work, these things have disappeared. New secular religions from wokeness to gender ideology to even the climate cult, they have taken the place of those traditional values and fill that void. You ask people my age, I'm a millennial. I'm 37 years old. I'm the first Republican ever to run for president as a millennial. I'll tell you as a member of my generation, people my age, really people any age today in this country, we're so hungry for a cause. We're hungry for purpose and meaning and identity. Yet we cannot even answer what it means to be an American in the year 2023. Mental health epidemics, anxiety, depression, you wonder where that comes from. It's like two rivers colliding. On one hand, we're hungry for purpose, yet we no longer believe in God. We no longer have faith in our country. We no longer believe in the virtues of hard work and family. Combine that with telling a generation that you can't express yourself freely, that's when you get the mental health epidemic that's raging across America. I think we have an opportunity to fix that. This is not a Republican issue or a Democrat issue. It is an American issue. If we can answer the question for the next generation, what it means to be American today, then addressing all of our other challenges from economic to foreign policy become that much easier. So what does it mean to be American? To me, it means you believe in basic ideas, ideas like merit, that you get ahead in this country, not on the color of your skin, but on the content of your character and your contributions. It means you believe in the rule of law that means that, you know what, people like my parents can come to this country legally through the front door to make their contributions as they did. Raising two kids, not just me, but my brother too, who went on to found successful companies that helped thousands of Americans. Yes, we should legally want more like them, but it also means that your first act of entering this country cannot be a law-breaking one. It means you believe in concepts like free speech and open debate in this country to say that you get to speak your mind freely as long as I get that same right in return. It means we live in a country where the government does not use private companies to do through the back door what government could not get done through the front door under the Constitution, including censoring its political critics. It means you believe that, here's a radical idea for you, that the people in this room, people like you who we elect to run the government, ought to be the ones who actually run the government, rather than a managerial class that both in the states and in the federal government actually runs the show today. And that's why, for example, I've become the first U.S. presidential candidate in this race who said that if I'm elected U.S. president, I will take those agencies that should have never existed, like the U.S. Department of Education, and actually shut them down. $83 billion flowing through an agency in Washington, D.C. that's actually holding your schools here in the state of New Hampshire hostage, saying that they don't get money unless those schools adopt one-sided political agendas advanced by the U.S. Department of Education. I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat. That federal government has no business educating the children of this state or any other state across this union. You want to use that money better, dissolve that $83 billion for 25% of it, we could put three armed security guards actually protecting our kids in every school in this country. You ask yourself, what's a better use of that money? It isn't even close. Take an agency like even the FBI or the ATF or the government agencies that once existed to fulfill a function but today have become so toxic, so politicized, 
that the only answer left is actually to shut them down. And when you need, you create something new to take its place. When I pledged to say I would shut down the FBI and build a new administrative agency to actually enforce the law rather than to make it up, first they said that was a partisan point. You want to know what? The FBI was weaponized against Democrats, including Martin Luther King, before it was actually weaponized against Republicans. This is not a partisan issue. And that is why I love coming to this state. I say the real defining conflict of our time in America, it's not between red and blue. It's not between black and white. It's not between men and women. It's not what they would have you believe. It is between whether you are pro-American, whether you believe in those basic ideals that set this country into motion 250 years ago in places not far from where we are here in Concord, where those first shots were fired. Are you pro-American? Or are you fundamentally anti-American? Do you wish to apologize for the ideals on which this nation was founded? Do you wish to apologize for the existence of a country that embodies those ideals? That is actually the question we face as a country. You know what, we might disagree on whether corporate tax rates should be high or low, whether ivermectin treats COVID. Okay, fine, those are details. But on the basic rules of the road, meritocracy, free speech, open debate, self-governance over aristocracy, the rule of law, I think most of us in this room, we agree on those basic rules of the road. If you agree on those ideals, we're on the same team. If you disagree with me, then let's talk about it because that's actually what we need to be reviving in this country, representing not just a partisan system, but actually a pro-American movement that now lives itself through what I want to see as a new Republican Party. That is the new American dream for this country is not just about green pieces of paper. It's about reviving conviction in our purpose as citizens. Tell you, for the last 10, 15 years in this country, we've grown so accustomed to celebrating our diversity and our differences so much that we forgot all the ways we're really just the same as one people bound by that common set of ideals. I'm looking around the room here today. I see people of different shades of melanin, different genders, two of them, if you ask me. That's good. That's diversity. But it only means something if there is something greater that unites us across that diversity. Think about it. Without that, we're just a group of higher mammals roaming a common geographic space, doing what our iPhones told us to do on a given day. That isn't America. That is not the America I learned to pledge allegiance to as a kid. That is not the America I see today. America is a place that is bound together by a common set of ideals, a vision of what a place can be. And I believe deep in my bones, those ideals still exist. And I'm running for president to revive them. Yes, I am an unapologetic America first conservative. But even if you're with me in that movement, you listen to me when I say this, to put America first, we need to rediscover what America is. E pluribus unum, from many, one. That is the vision that won us the American Revolution 250 years ago. That is the vision that reunited us after the Civil War. That is the vision that won us two world wars and the Cold War. That is still the vision that gives hope to the free world as we know it. And if we can revive those ideals over fractious group identity or grievance politics, then I'll tell you, nobody in the world, not a nation, not a corporation, not a virus is going to defeat us. That is what this thing we call American exceptionalism is all about. And the note I'll leave to you all in closing is that there is not a time in my life, and I'll be so bold as to make this statement, there won't be a time in our lifetime when state legislators actually have a bigger opportunity to shape our culture for the better. There have been times where it had to come from other forces in our culture, but in the states today, from primary education 
to capital markets, to how your pensioners, pension fund money is invested to create a country that they did not vote for, to actually revive civic education, to keep traditions like being a first in the nation primary alive, not just for your state, but for the country. There is not a moment in American history in this century where you in this room will be able to make a more positive difference for reviving that culture. And here's my promise to you. If you rise to the occasion, if you do it, my promise to you is that we will not be, as I said in that book when I wrote it, I was in a bad mood when I wrote that book. I said, are we a nation in decline? Are we Rome? Are we Carthage? My promise to you is if you, it's not going to be just me. It's going to be all of us rising to the occasion. It's going to be you rising to the occasion. If you're able to do it, then we will not be that nation in decline. We will be a nation whose best days are still ahead of us. A nation, yes, going through adolescence right now, a little young, figuring out who we're really going to be when we grow up. But we will get to the other side of that with conviction because of the work of each of you in this room and the constituents who you represent and who I will be traveling this state over the next five days to meet hand to hand and as we will be here for the next year as we make our run for President of the United States. Thank you. God bless New Hampshire. God bless the United States. Thank you for having me. I appreciate that. Thank you. One minute. Thank you. I appreciate that. So. You could be, will be, the second person, Marianne Williamson, was okay, here, very good. to sign our first in the nation primary license plate. It's first now. We're going to keep it that way. Thank you. And since, Congratulations. Thank you. And since you're going to be spending a lot of time in New Hampshire, here's a calendar of the White Mountains. It's your homework. Okay, okay, I like enjoy. it. Enjoy. I thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. I thank love this. Thank much. you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take questions. We'll take some questions out here if you want to. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Mr. Ramaswamy said that if anybody wants to ask him any